So here's a logic movie about how to construct truth tables. Constructing truth tables is one of the easiest things that we do all semester once you know the basic tricks. We've got a table set up. We have four different formulas and so we want to construct a table to find out what's going to be the output column for each one of these formulas given the inputs. We start by creating guide columns and all we do is list the sentence letters that show up in the formulas. There's only two sentence letters here, so how many different uh, rows are we going to have to worry about? Well, it's four rows. Two sentence letters means four rows, and they're easy to generate. Underneath the first letter, just alternate true, false, true, false. Underneath the second letter, alternate true, false, oops, true, true, false, false. Just about said the wrong thing. So what we've done here is got generated all the combinations of T's and F's that are possible with two sentence letters. We've got the case where they're both true, the case where they're both false, and in between we have the possible combinations. All right, now let us work on dash A wedge B. If we're going to be really thorough, we'll start off by taking the guide column and just repeating it underneath the sentence letters. So under A, we have true, false, true, false, and that's all we're going to do is underneath A, just rewrite true, false, true, false. Underneath B, we have true, true, false, false. So underneath B, we're going to write true, true, false, false. This is a step that you may want to skip after you get more comfortable with the method. But to begin with, just rewrite the guide columns underneath the sentence letters. Now we need to work on the connectives. Each connective is going to generate a column underneath it. It's really important that we work on the connectives in the right order. Which are we going to use work on first, the dash or the wedge? Well, it turns out that we're always going to work on main connectives last because the main connective is going to give you the value for the entire formula. So we're going to need to do the wedge first and then the dash. You're always going to work on least connective first, and one way to think of it is that you're always going to work inside the parentheses first and then outside the parentheses. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we've been doing when we were thinking about proofs. Okay, so we're going to work on the wedge. What is the rule for a wedge? Well, when is a wedge statement true? A uh, wedge is true, and let's see, we could write it down here. The wedge, true, when either part, when either input is true. Wedge equals true when either input is true, because when is an OR statement true? When at least one of the components is true. So, true wedge true gets us true. False wedge true is also true. True wedge false, true. False wedge false is false. Once you have uh, worked on a connective, you can cross out the columns that you just used to generate that connective. The next step here will be to work on the dash. The dash is the easiest connective to work with. It just takes a single column and gives you the opposite. So the main connective inside was the wedge. The dash says take that main connective and reverse the values. You get false, 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 true. But now we can cross that off and we want to circle this because this is the result for our first formula. Dash is main connective. Underneath it we get false, 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 true. What this tells us is that when both of the inputs are true, when A and B are true, the whole formula is false. If they're false and true or true and false, the whole thing is false. But if they're both false, the whole thing is true. Not very exciting, but there's things that we can do with this information later on. All right, so now let's look at dash A ampersand dash B. Once again, if we're going to be thorough, then underneath A, we're going to write true, false, true, false. Underneath B, we're going to write true, true, false, false. All right, 
And then we'd have to ask ourselves, all right, what connectives are we working on first? The ampersand's the main connective, so it has to be last. Therefore, let's work on this dash, and then this dash, and then we'll finish up with the ampersand. Working on this dash is just to take the A column and get the opposite values. False, true, false, true, and cross out the A. Now on dash B, we do the same thing. We get, we get is false, false, true, true, and we cross out the B. Now if you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, why did I bother to write in the A column? Why didn't I immediately just write the opposite of the A column underneath the dash? That's a very reasonable thing to think, and if you want to take that shortcut, by all means do so. Uh, it's a, you know, that's, that's certainly a reasonable thing to do. Because notice, I haven't given myself much room to write this ampersand column, and things get really cluttered. So if you see a way to leave out a column, that's, that is certainly appropriate. All right, let's work on the ampersand. What's the rule for the ampersand? It's true only when both inputs are true. All right, so you get a true result only when both of the inputs are true. Because to make an AND sentence true, you have to make both of the both parts true. So all together, false ampersand false. What do we get? False, of course. True and false? False. False and true. False. True and true? That's the one where we would get true. This is our result, so let us circle it. Okay.